Friday markets here in the U.S. are rather chilly, the exception being orders for very high-end goods. But we are noticing a weaker demand setting up from abroad, even for the better quality diamonds. So we'll have to see how that trend plays out in our market as the JA show gets underway Sunday here in New York. India reports slow activity for polished goods and at the cutting centers. Let's check now with Zach on Israel and Europe. Zach? Hi, Jeff. There has been a shift in attitudes this week from last. In Israel and across Europe, people have accepted that the markets are what they are, and so there isn't much anyone can really do in such a slow environment. Traders in Belgium are quietly stocking up for the IIJS India show, but the only news on the immediate horizon will come out of New York next week at JA. Here in Ramagan, most activity is centered on trading goods in DE and F colors and in VS2 and above clarities. Demand is dropping off for four carats on up as higher prices are working their way across the chain. Fancy colors are continuing their shift away from light grades and towards intense and vivids. That's all for this week. Back to you. Thank you, Zach. I'll return with De Beers' results and to talk about the Diamond Development Initiative right after this message. De Beers' first half sales were up 10% to $3.7 billion. DTC sales also rose that much to $3.3 billion, benefiting from several price increases since January, especially for larger, better goods. Net earnings fell 10% to $316 million. Global production fell 4% to 24 million carats. Company chairman Nikki Oppenheimer and managing director Gareth Penny held a call this morning to review these results. The world's an uncertain place at the moment, and to be able to, to uh, produce the first half we have is really very encouraging. Uh, we certainly don't see any sign of demand for the better quality goods declining. Uh, the fact that we're building new mines and being able to, uh, as we say, formally open these three new mines this year, uh, again emphasizes De Beers' commitment to the future and, and the exciting portfolio we have. Diamond mines are very hard to find, and when you look at the number of diamond mines in the world, they're few and far between. De Beers is, is certainly determined to maintain its position as the, uh, the most important diamond producer and marketer in the world. The mass market retail jewelry sales have been impacted by economic issues, um, particularly in the U.S., and whilst there has been strong growth in China, India, Russia, and the Middle East, this has um, helped to mitigate, but nevertheless, the overall retail market uh, is likely to re remain challenging for, as I said, um, the, the mass market end of the business. Demand for high-end diamonds is likely to remain robust, and uh, we expect that to continue through the second half of the year. Uh, I would like to mention the Forever Mark. Following pilots in Asia, the Forever Mark is now being launched in Hong Kong and China in the fourth quarter of this year, and in South Africa, Japan, India, and Taiwan in the first half of next year. Rivermark will also launch its own independent grading operations in Belgium and the UK and with further new locations planned in 2009 and 10. The Beers Diamond Jewelers has performed well in the first half. Um, sales are substantially ahead of 2007, driven principally by bridal and high end. Um, the network expansion has continued with the opening of new stores in Dallas, San Francisco, Kiev, Moscow, Hong Kong, Taipei, Honolulu, and the new flagship store in the Ginza in Tokyo. During the second half, uh, the recently appointed director uh, general of the Diamond Development Initiative, Dorothy mentioned that a major focus point for DDI is to increase understanding of artisanal mining. The group has found that in some cases, governments can be so overwhelmed by the problems inherent with the sector that they either choose to ignore it or take the stand that conditions just cannot be improved. For the long haul, she talks about DDI's goals and said it was important for the industry to move towards a culture of corporate partnership. 
you often find that when a when a company operates in a country they they are responsible even in the contracts that they sign uh, to build schools to put the roads and uh, you know to probably create a um, build a hospital provide some health services something like that i believe that that's charity because they are in fact replacing substituting themselves for the government the government is responsible for the development of its country. The government is responsible for the welfare and the well-being of its population. When it asks a company to assume all of those responsibilities, it is then abdicating its responsibility. I believe what they should do is to engage the government in partnership in those projects of construction, in this project of maintenance of infrastructure that's being put in place, not to be the only doer of these particular projects. Because when that company is no longer in place or moves out to other operations, who is then responsible for maintenance of all that infrastructure? The government that doesn't have the culture of doing it would not come in and do it. It needs to take responsibility. And the people need to know, the population needs to know that their government is taking responsibility for them. I would like to be able to say that we are present in a number of countries and here are the following um, the following um, achievements that we have made. You know, we have organized a number of artisanal miners. Let's say in five years, 60% of artisanal miners are registered, are better organized, and that they are now trading knowledgeably. You know, they are selling their diamonds knowing what the diamond is truly worth because one of the main issues is that artisanal miners don't know what the price of the diamond is and they sell it at such a derisory price that uh, they don't get the real value from it. So that, and that um, probably if we are present in five countries in five years and where we have done the work with 60% of the artisanal miners, I think we're getting there. The Rappaport Group is also involved in DDI. For more information, you can visit the website at ddiglobal.org. There has been a bit of a sell-off in commodities this week, which is not really unusual this time of year, but this year has not been following norms. A slightly higher direction for the dollar combined with a drop in oil and grain commodities, pressured gold in particular this week. Platinum has had quite a rough month so far. Gold is down 3% to $930.20 an ounce. Platinum is down almost 9% to 1749 It has lost 16% since July 1st. Silver is down better than 5% to $17.73 an ounce. Be sure to check Diamonds.net for all the latest industry news.